Pathologists are indispensable to the operation of our medical system, but who are they and what do they actually do? Dr. Melody Caramans is a genetic pathologist with a major metropolitan hospital. Genetic pathologists look at genetic disease, I diagnose genetic disease. So as soon as I say that, usually and mention some common diseases like cystic fibrosis or Down syndrome or prenatal diagnosis or diagnosis of molecular diagnosis of leukemias, most people have a good idea what that involves. You're someone who understands what the doctor is looking for and understands what the science is capable of. So you can um, tend to, to direct the investigations of the clinician in a more appropriate way. You have a better knowledge of what's available so you can actually give them the tools to be able to diagnose what they're looking for um, in, a, in a more accurate and more reliable way so that they can be more certain of the diagnosis. You're essentially trying to predict what's going to happen for a patient. When you give someone a genetic diagnosis, it's not often like other diagnoses where, you know, your potassium level in your blood can change from week to week or your cholesterol can change um, from month to month. The genetic diagnosis is, is something that you've got and that doesn't change. Some genetic diseases are 100% penetrant, which means that if you have the mutation, you have a 100% chance of developing the disease. However, with many genetic diseases, the penetrance is much less. So it's not so much that you will absolutely develop the disease, but that you have a chance of developing the disease. Genetics is very manual and still very labour intensive. Um, you know, even a 24 hour, hour turnaround time is actually something that's reasonably recent and that we can give results in that kind of time frame. So there's a three, so there's, a three there's a duplication and a deletion. Mm. Okay. You can be looking for specific mutations in a family, for example if a family has a history of haemophilia or a muscular dystrophy or for um, mothers who are older and that happens a lot these days you look for chromosomal abnormalities like Down syndrome because they're at a higher risk of Down syndrome so you can be looking for a range of things. Yeah so how many uh, when the results are given out they're given out in a clinical genetic setting so there needs to be um, adequate counselling given because the results always have implications not just for themselves but for their future reproductive um, options and um, for other members of the family. In, in genetics you've got a much more consultative role um, with many types of specialties you need to guide them because they sometimes they don't know uh, what the implications of the results are that they're asking for and they may ask for something that doesn't give them the full picture. After leaving high school, Dr. Caraman spent the next five years gaining her medical degree. She then worked in the public hospital system as a clinician for 10 years before deciding on becoming a pathologist. Five years on and she gained her fellowship with the College of Pathologists and is currently doing her PhD in genetics. I love it. I absolutely love it because, I mean, uh, all the cliches, as I was, I was saying before, are true. I mean, I got into medicine because I really wanted to help people. And I guess working at this kind of level gives you the opportunity to help so many people. And you do see results, which is a very rewarding thing. And while Dr. Caramans is a genetic pathologist, pathologists generally play a very wide role and are actually involved in diagnosing almost 70% of disease and work across a range of different specialities. These include anatomical pathology, the study of disease through tissue, forensic pathology which seeks to investigate and define the cause of unexpected death, chemical pathology which deals with the entire range of disease and encompasses detecting changes in a number of substances in blood and body fluids such as electrolytes, enzymes and proteins, hematology which deals with diseases which affect the blood such as anemia, leukemia, lymphoma and clotting or bleeding disorders, immunopathology which looks at allergic reactions, autoimmune disorders such as diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis and thyroid conditions, microbiology which deals with diseases caused by infectious agents such as bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites and general pathology which covers the profession as a whole. It's the equivalent of trying to find a spelling mistake in an encyclopedia.